Mazzy. Are you ready for mixing night, Mazzy? I think we're going to wait one second for the studio live audience to catch up. Yeah, you're going to have a treat, baby girl. All right, hopefully the live audience is caught up. It is mixing night, March 2nd. Woo! We're only doing mixing night once a month now. I am your host, Ken Lewis, here with the lovable hellhound, Mazakeen Lewis, holding down security for the night. I'm Ken Lewis. I have the weirdest resume in the entire music industry. Join me and the whole mixing night crew for the next two hours live from the studio because tonight is reverb night. If you ever struggled with reverb, stay tuned. You know, I'm going to be dropping DAW gems to help you all, and your skills all night long, culminating with reverb ear training. Did you hear the reverb trailing off? Of the, anyway. uh, I'm going to teach you what to listen for before ear training, then you get to challenge your own ears and see how you do. Uh, also, new beat challenge tonight. We are launching um, a new beat challenge sponsored by our friends at UVI. Somebody is winning a UVI vintage vault, which is like the mother load of all synth packages. That's crazy. Uh, we serve up a royalty-free starter cooked up by Dominic, and you guys get to throw down. I will play you the starter about 8.30. You'll check it out later. Tonight, I compiled an insane... <coughs> hey, you. You relax. <laughs> Tonight, I compiled an insane list of 27 pro mixers and their top five go-to reverb plugins. I will reveal their choices later on along with my own top five. It's going to be fascinating. I was actually really, really shocked at the results. And one of the fascinating things was there was a whole bunch of uh, plugins on there that made like heavyweight pros top five lists that I'd never heard of before. So I'm definitely going to check those out. Uh, I have a live in-studio real guest human being tonight. Oh my God, unbelievable. It's uh, Brent Colatalo is joining me. Brent K will be joining me live in the studio for studio stories and viewer critiques. Yes, viewer critiques live. So Brent uh, has been my production partner since like the dawn of time. Incredibly, ridiculously talented producer and mixer if anybody needs a mixer out there. Um, so, uh, Brent will be joining me live for studio stories and viewer critiques. Uh, if anybody watching right now, you need to kind of be live right now, uh, wants to have two multi-platinum producers critique your song live on tonight's broadcast, <laughs> then submit your song for me and Brent to critique live later on. Uh, and, uh, let's see, where, uh, where's, hey, where's the submission? Okay. In the next 30 minutes, if you want a live critique, send your MP3, it can't be a link, it's got to be something we can download small, uh, to info at mixingnight.com, info at mixingnight.com, info at mixingnight.com, Mazzy Bear, you need to relax, girl. Uh, all right, so uh, we need to harvest those by about 8.30, so ready to go if you, uh, if you want your critique tonight. Uh, I am Ken Lewis. I have had an absolutely insane work run lately. I can't talk about a whole lot of the stuff that I've been doing lately, but oh man, uh, 2022 is charging out of the gate like it's the damn Kentucky Derby so far this year. It's uh, It's been great. Um, I recently earned my 108th go uh, RIAA gold record for Lana Del Rey, Born to Die. Thank you, Lana Del Rey. And you, young lady, you calm down and be a good girl. See how long that lasts. Okay, in other news, who knows what soundbetter.com is? Oh, Mazzy knows what soundbetter.com is. Every creative watching should at least, hey you, should at least be aware of it. Come here, come here. Hush, come on. Uh, every, every creative watching should at least be aware of soundbetter.com. It's a hub for creatives to find and hire each other. Hey you, stop it. You know, you don't give her treats for too long and she does a little ape shit. Uh, we'll calm her down. So uh, it's a hub for creatives to find and hire each other so you can offer your services on Sound Better and people might actually pay you for them. Hmm. So anyway, um, my big announcement is that I am finally on Sound Better. Oh, oh, that's right, Matthew. Oh, woo. It's about freaking time. So if you want to hire me for anything creative, that's right, you do. You want to hire me for creative treat giving. That's what you want. Uh, you can uh, find me at soundbetter.com. Uh, just Google Ken Lewis Soundbetter and it'll come right up. Man, tonight's show is stacked. Madonna holiday. Yes. Some angel from the ether. It just showed up in my inbox and it was the original tracks to Madonna's holiday. 
Uh, so I'm going to sprint mix it tonight, the original source tracks, and then I'm going to do a quick track breakdown um, after I do the sprint. Uh, it's going to be so cool. Uh, that's, that song is from 1983. I know, right, Maz? 1983, the first uh, album that Madonna ever did. She was probably a teenager still. It's just incredible. Uh, what a talent. Um, so anyway, Madonna Holiday uh, tonight. I also show you many ways to... Uh, and tools to listen to reverb. I'm teaching you the characteristics, functions, types, you name it. I'm teaching it. Come on. Uh, we got our new assistant engineer segment tonight with Jonathan Garcia. Jonathan gives you what I learned at Jedi School before Anakin murdered us all. Uh, Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Man of Mystery, gives us killer tips on creating hi-hat patterns with different plugins. Oh man, I really like that segment. It's a really good one. And uh, this is a special one. I've been waiting for this for a while. Anthony Morano is a live mix engineer for Cirque du Soleil. And tonight he gives us a fascinating behind the scenes walkthrough of a day in the life of his job uh, mixing live for Cirque du Soleil. It's absolutely fascinating. And it makes me want to go work for Cirque du Soleil. It's a, it looks like so much fun. Uh, so that's going to be super cool. That's going to be about 8.45 tonight. Uh, you know, they do live Cirque shows in 5.1 immersive sound which is just crazy uh if you've never seen Cirque man it is I highly recommend it I've seen two of them and they just are mind-blowing you just expect somebody to get die every night the crazy shit they do and they're always fine uh speaking of immersive sound I have been uh immersed in Atmos mixing here and absolutely loving it but right now it is sprint mixing time uh through the musical ether you know I got that Madonna holiday so uh so I'm throwing down on that one. Um, and uh, come on, you. You need to relax. It's mixing night, okay? It's mi relax. Mazzy just, you know, she just wants to be a part of the, the action. Um, okay. Let me, where's my sprint? Sprint mix. Uh, okay, why why sprint mixing, Ken? Well, why? Is it to, so you can mix really fast and get your mix done so you can go out and party and not have to work so hard? No, it's not that at all. <clears throat> it's I think um, Michael Brower kind of put it, uh, summed it up really, really well uh, in this interview that he did in the studio for Waves. And it was, he basically said it's like a performance. And he's there, he wants to connect with the music just like the musicians in the band and the vocalist and the songwriter and the producer are all connecting with the music. And hey, you, you need to relax. Shh. No, no. Um, and, uh, so he wants to get everything into the mix really, really fast so that he can treat the song as a, as a live performance and as a, you know, as a song mix. So that's what I do in, in sprint mixing as well. Um, so, so I'm going to set 10 minutes on the clock. Uh, did I turn all the faders down? I think I did. Yes. Okay. I'm at zero. You know, I'm masking up because Omicron and BA2 are still out there raging and uh, the United States is approaching 1 million dead from uh, COVID. So oh, um, I still haven't gotten it and I am staying masked up. You should too. Be careful out there. Come on. Where is my disco lights of all nights? I'm here we go. Uh -huh. Mazzy is being super insistent tonight. Okay, there, Mazzy. All right, holiday. Uh, Madonna. This is such a fun one. Um, this is mixing night. Ken Lewis. Ten minutes. Boom.
Now, some of you might notice I didn't start with the drums. I started with just the kicks. I wanted, you know, I wanted that kind of dance beat so I can tap along with my foot as I'm uh, mixing along and putting everything together. And now Massey wants back in, of course. Uh, and uh, But I left like the hi-hat and the claps out for a while because I just really wanted to feel how the music was grooving before I put the super steady hat uh, snare in. Um, and then, man, as soon as it comes in, the whole feel just totally snaps right together. Uh, this is a really fun one. It is reverb night.
It's reverb night. Green It's a little overkill with the reverb and delay. I know, I know, but you know what tonight is? Tonight is reverb night. So, you know, a little bit extra. Uh, I'm Ken Lewis. Welcome to Mixing Night. That was, this is, as far as I know, uh, the original multi track of Madonna uh, Holiday. Um, and wow, what a cool, cool multi track to have uh, scored out of the ether. Um, thank you to my guardian angel. Let me play you guys some of the raw tracks from this uh, really fascinating production and uh, mixing here. Let's see. 
Um, I mean, who doesn't want to hear Madonna? Here's, here's Madonna. And for the good times. Forget about the bad times. Oh, yeah. One day to come together to release the pressure. We need a holiday. If we took a holiday. Took some time to celebrate. I mean, does anybody else think that's as cool as I think that is? <laughs> what is happening with my lights right now? I'm so sorry. Come on, Ken. Pull it together. All right. Here's... That looks a little bit more like it. We really had some pinks going on there for a minute. All right. What's, what's next? What do you want to hear next? Let me play these background vocals. I'm just going to pick through these. We need a holiday. Holiday. Celebrate. Okay, so one thing you notice is these, uh, this is a stereo blend of multiple voices. So this either means one of two things. They multi-tracked it on a slave reel and then... Uh, blended and combined all of the recorded um, background vocals into one stereo background vocal blend for the mix reel. Uh, or two or three or four girls got behind the microphone all at one time and sang it. It sounds like Madonna's voice is in there, but I don't know if it's Madonna and others or if it's Madonna multi-tracked on the background. Let's listen one more time. We need a holiday. I, I think it's Madonna multi-tracked and blended. That's what I think. Um, I think the piano is real. Eh, maybe not. It feels pretty blocky. Um, so th that sounds probably like a quantized, I don't know, that good of a piano in 1983? Doubtful. That's probably played. You know, people knew how to fucking play back then. Um, I played on a million records, and I'm not a great musician, but I still play on a million records. Uh, this has to be all live percussion, and I would bet money that it's Bashiri Johnson. Um, if it's not Bashiri Johnson, Bashiri Johnson played on nearly every percussion date in New York City for, like, the whole time I was a tracking engineer. He was just a human rhythm uh, machine, and he would show up with these boxes of uh, percussion items that you had no idea what the heck he was pulling out. And, and I would just be like, all right, where's the mic? What, where do you want me to put them? He, he would just be like, put the mic here. I'd be like, all right, dude. <laughs> So it was it sounds like his playing um and I'm pretty sure this was done in New York. Same with the shaker. This sounds like the bass guitar through a sub processing pedal. You hear it? And then here's the bass by itself. All right. Uh, and then the guitars, finally. The guitars are so cool. I love these uh, old, I mean, 1983, this is uh, so the piece of history. I was 13 years old when this song came out. Um, yeah, I know, I'm old. Uh, but, um, still kicking. Uh, let's see, what's next? You know, uh, are you guys aware that we have a plug-in company? Um, yes, we have a plug-in company, Mixing Night Audio. We are incredibly proud of it. We would not have Mixing Night Audio if not for this amazing, amazing Mixing Night community. And uh, we have been working really hard behind the scenes on two things. Um, one is a new plugin that we hope to get out this summer. And oh my God, this is so awesome. Oh my God, it is so awesome. Um, but 
uh, for Green Haas. We've been trying to get an ad campaign together for a while, and I've just been dragging my feet with it. And finally, um, we finished it, and I love it. And I wanted to play it for you guys tonight. It's only like 90 seconds, so it's not going to take long. And so, honestly, here's what I would like from my community. Post a comment or send me an email or drop a comment on the chat or something and let us know how the commercial hits you because we're about to spend a lot of money rolling this out to uh, a mass marketing campaign. And we hope that it uh, gets the message out for Green Haas and that we have a successful plugin. Um, so without further ado, uh, I'm going to play you our new Green Haas, uh, where is it? There it is, uh, video. This was produced by Jay Gold. Uh, you can follow Gold at Director Gold, G-O-L-D-E, Director Gold. And that's on both Instagram and YouTube. He's incredibly talented. Check out his work right here. And uh, check. Don't just play music, play music. Green Haas is the new way to level up your tracks. This is more than just saturation and spreading. Green Haas creates vibe. Scroll the presets to hear the incredible range of sound and emotion you can easily create. Then grab your shovel, we're going to the garden. Set your timers to spread, plant some flower modulators, and fire up that saturated infrared warmth. If you thought you knew stereo spreading before, you don't know Haas. We have turbocharged the stereo field with customized combinations of delay, modulation, filters, saturation, and distortion unlike anything you've heard, and all in one plugin. You can even use the dozens of built-in presets as inspiration for your tracks or create new custom combinations to make Green Haas your own personal secret weapon. It works with vocals, drums, 808, bass, piano, guitar. The possibilities are limitless. Green Haas is simply the most powerful creative tool you can find today. If you've always wanted your music to stand out and breathe that extra bit of character into your sounds, the cheat code is Green Haas. What do you think? We love it. Uh, so that's going to be our new commercial. I'm, I'm hoping that it's one of those things that a month from now you're telling your friends, God, if I see that fucking Green Haas commercial one more time, I'm going to end somebody because that will mean that it's successful. When you see a commercial running over and over and over, that means that it's getting traction and shit is getting done. So that's what we're hoping for. We're confident. We've been working super hard behind the scenes. And uh, if you haven't tried Green Haas yet, man, you are missing out. I, I seriously, this is no bullshit at all. I could pick any of my mixes literally back to the first day that it was available for me and you could pull it up and there will be one to 20 instances of Green Haas in that mix. It is a Swiss army knife of vibe. Um, I love it so much. It's really has replaced so much that I do. Uh, let's see what else is next. Oh, I'm going to do listen, how to listen to reverb. Oh, you're going to love this segment. How to listen to reverb. Uh, where is it? Boom. There it is. Okay. How to listen to reverb. So, uh, first off, um, there is a um, black magic voodoo b in like future tech box that shouldn't be allowed to be possessed by normal human beings called Isotope RX9. And um, you just wouldn't believe what this thing does. So, okay, I took um, Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack, leave the door open. God, what a great song. What a song. Okay. And all I did was I selected RX9, Isotope RX9, Music Rebalance. Uh, and all you got to do is select what you want um, to filter out. So I, I only want to hear the vocal and I want to get rid of everything else. 
So I will go good quality, best quality. I usually go to separation about 70, 75, and then render. And it takes a long time because this is doing some crazy voodoo stuff. And then here's the acapella. I, 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 don't, I don't even know how. So if you're trying to lay in peace, oh, I'm going to leave the That was extracted from that two track. I went the first time I heard this uh, tech, I was so this is some straight CSI TV shit. Like this is this is the stuff that when Lori and I would be watching the CSI and they would do some really stupid audio stuff, I'd just be looking at her like, no, no, uh uh. But then if they did this, I'd have been like, no, can't do that. But I mean, the craziest thing about this is the uh, the clarity and uh, what's the word? Um, how uh, glued together the reverb is. You hear the space in the reverb, and that allows you to tell what kind of reverb that you're listening for. Listen and see if you can tell. So if you're trying to lay in Beautiful, beautiful. I'm guessing there's a lot of plates going on and maybe a hole. Um, so let me play you some other things. So I, I pulled this whole thing apart. Here's the drums only. So if you try to lay in peace, I'm gonna leave the door open. I mean, if this isn't a sample-based producer's dream tool, <laughs> I mean, Lord, you could pull out just a piece of this and then super manipulate it. I'm not suggesting that you do this. I'm just merely pointing out that this particular piece of software could very easily save you from a large sample clearance of something. You, not me. I don't... I don't know. Um, so... Really incredible stuff. So, okay, so I took the RX-9 uh, acapella, and then I'm going to show you a few other different ways to listen. Um, uh, we just heard RX-9. Now, I took that same acapella, and I ran it through Waves S1, and I have this set up to listen in A minus B. If you don't know what A minus B is, uh, you flip, you. it's a stereo track and you are you stereo field and you flip one side out of phase and then you sum left right together let me see what i'm doing here yep sum left right together and you only hear uh so the center channel is completely gone and all you're hearing is the sum of the side channels summed into mono in the middle but only the side channels you're hearing none of the main channel so this is a way that you can listen and hear what's really going on on the sides. Maybe you can hear the reverbs a little bit clearer. Uh, let's give it a listen. This is A minus B listening. Now you hear the background vocals there. Ah. Those, uh, they're pretty loud and clear in A minus B because they're not in the middle. They're panned left and right. So uh, when you listen in A minus B, it sums the things on the side together and gets rid of the center. So those background vocals on the sides get summed together and you hear them. Okay, so that's A minus B listening. This is M S listening, mid side listening. Same tool, um, but you switch the input mode to M S. Um, and what this does is 
uh, it plays, it splits up your signal and the middle is going to be in the left speaker and the two sides are going to be summed to the right speaker. Uh, so you can hear kind of much more, you, know, you hear, you'll see. And how you can really hear this is, I'll, I'll, uh, let you hear, this is the center channel. Again, this is MS listening mid-side. That's the combination of the two side channels pan to the right. And again, this is ha this is happening because I'm listening in MS. You don't flip the phase or anything, you just switch it to MS and you get that interesting wild result. Uh, and you know, this just really helps you kind of pick apart what you're listening to, especially if you're trying to learn. Uh, one of the best ways to learn uh, is to hear what other people are doing, how they're doing it, and then try and incorporate those techniques into your own uh, shit and see how it goes. Uh, another way to listen is with uh, center, and you can remove the center or the sides. And it's kind of phase incoherent, but it still can give you a pretty good idea of what you're hearing. And obviously you can use this on any stereo signal. I'm just using this on the acapella to demonstrate with uh, vocals and reverb. <laughs> Romancing in the east wing and the west wing of this mansion was happening. I am playing no games, every word that I say is coming from the heart. Pretty fascinating results. So that's uh, Waves Center. And then uh, one of my other favorite ways to listen is with Adapter AB Metric from Plugin Alliance. And uh, this is a, a cool, usually you put this at the end of your mix bus and you throw in um, uh, reference mixes that you A, B against while you're mixing and it kind of tells you what's going on with your mix, right? But also, this has a whole listen section um, over in the right corner here. And let me just show you some of the ways that you can pick apart a mix. So there's two important sections. There's here, mono, L, S, R, sides. Um, and then there's, which is mono summed, left only, uh, uh, S? What is S? Solo? I don't know what S is. Uh, R, <laughs> right only, and sides only. Um, and then you have a whole filter section over here that you can... Uh, yeah. So you can kind of scroll through a whole bunch of different frequency ranges and see what's going on. And especially if you're trying to match... Uh, the ener say, for instance, the energy of, say, your 808 against uh, a reference 808. Um, if you filter them all, both of them down just to, to listen to them and you get rid of everything above, say, 100 hertz just for a few seconds while you're A, B in between them, then you can really feel like, okay, what is the sub energy doing right now? And do I have enough? Too much? Is it, you know, woofy? What's going on? Okay. Anyway, so... Um, Five ways to listen to reverb. What is next on the broadcast? Uh, you know, a little q and I'm going to knock this out. I'm a little behind schedule, but not much. I'm doing all right. Uh, all right. Uh, David, uh, David Wilson III asks, Hey, Ken, is there any way I can become an affiliate for Greenhouse? A great fucking question, David. Uh, I believe that the answer is yes. Uh, if you happen to be on the chat roll, David, um, chat up uh, Dominic Dom Ravinius on the chat roll. Um, uh, and I think Dom is handling the affiliate program for Green Haas, uh, which I think is, I think we're doing it. I don't know. Uh, okay. Charles Potenza just asks, hey, Ken, Atmos, uh, what about it, Charles? I'm deeply in love with it. I... I am one of the people who believes that it is here to stay. It's going to take a while to catch. In my opinion, nobody's going to care, then everybody's going to care. And I believe that by Christmas, it's going to be the big selling buzzword. You're not going to be able to buy a pair of headphones without having them at most equipped. And then the Apple um, Quest Killer, uh, Oculus Quest Killer is going to come. And then the Apple eyeglasses are coming. I mean, this... Everything is going to be surround soon enough. It's not like stereo is going away. We'll always have stereo. But Atmos is here. 
I think. Uh, okay. Uh, Cowan? Cowan? Uh, Cowan asks, hey, Ken, what are the different ways to use reverb on an overall track? Um, I, I usually don't do that. I might do that if it was like an orchestral recording or something like that. But um, instead what I do is if I want like the, the coherency of like a single space and I want to put uh, my mix into that space, I wouldn't put that reverb on the mix bus. I would put that reverb on an aux bus. And in fact, I might put several reverbs that are that, but maybe slightly different variations of that, or a mono version panned left and a mono version panned right along with the stereo. And I would build uh, into that space with aux sends while I mix, um, because not everything is going to work equally well in that space. It's going to enhance certain things. It's going to detract from certain other things. And you want to be able to control how much uh, you uh, envelop each sound. And you can just do that with aux sends. You don't have to put anything on the mix bus. It's easy peasy. Uh, okay. Uh, Chris Adelman asks, uh, Hey, Ken, do you ever for effect pan a signal to the right and the reverb effects to the left? Uh, yes, um, I do. Um, you, you know, I don't think it works very often. Um and I tend to find that it's actually much cooler if you're panning a mono reverb with the mono signal. Um, uh, you would hope to get this nice spread from like panning a mono guitar here and it's mono return over there. And sometimes that's really, really cool. Sometimes, it definitely works. But usually when that reverb is sitting behind that guitar, it's kind of amplifying what that guitar is doing more. And it's, uh, I don't know, I just find putting mono uh, reverbs behind their mono sources wherever they're panned is usually par for the course for me. Um, as well as if I'm using a mono reverb on a lead vocal, uh, that would be in the middle. All right. What is next? Where are we? 842. Cooking right along. It's mixing night. This is Ken Lewis. Oh, man. Hey, you know, um, I got to give a big shout out to Audis. Uh, where are my new headphones? They're not new, but <laughs> they feel like new. So I've had these headphones for a while. These are Audis LCD XCs. Uh, they're the ridiculous pinnacle of fucking uh, headphones. Um, and uh, they were they were getting a little ragged because I uh, use them. And I just sent them off to Audis and they refurbished them and sent them back and they're like brand new. God, those things sound incredible. It's like really like slapping uh, speakers onto your head. They're a little bit big and heavy. You wouldn't want to mix with them for like two hours straight. Um, but man, uh, the, when like those translate to my atoms nearly perfectly, it's like I'm listening to the exact same thing. It's crazy. So anyway, uh, thank you, Audis. Uh, beat challenge. Um, all right, I'm going to play you the beat challenge real quick. Uh, yeah, where is beat starter? Boom. So, uh, in the description of the video, uh, come on. Oh, that's it. In the description of the video that you are watching right now with me is uh, the link to a zip file that contains the full starter and four individual stems. So if you want to break it up and use only pieces of it, only two or three of the stems, whatever. But you got to use at least some of the starter. Uh, everybody has to use the starter and you can go in whatever direction that you want. The starter is completely royalty free. You can cook it up, sell it, make a million. Don't pay me anything. Don't pay. I mean, you can. I, I would like that, but you don't legally have to. You could keep every penny if you wanted to. I hope you don't. Uh, here is the starter uh, for the new beat challenge. So this is sponsored. Let me, uh, dun, 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 sponsored by UVI. Um, boom. So the new beat challenge is sponsored by our friends at UVI. I really love their shit. Um, and they just put out Vintage Vault 4, which is just about the most ridiculous collection of sounds and synths and things that I have ever heard. Uh, so the first prize in the new beat challenge is going to get the Vintage Vault 4. Second and third prizes get their Shade plugin, which is a super, super dope, uh, like a filtering and sweep plugin. Oh man, it's awesome. Uh, so uh, it's a throwdown. Uh, use the uh, starter, but flip it however you want to. 
Uh, the starter zip is in the description of the video you're watching. Um, and I think, I don't know if we have given instructions, but basically if you're watching, I'll put up instructions later. Um, if you're watching, you need to submit this by two days before the show, Monday, I don't know, whatever the day is, uh, Monday, 6 p.m. to info at mixingnight.com, info at mixingnight.com. Uh, submit that and... Uh, uh, and we'll see who wins. And I'll give you guys updates uh, throughout the uh, month on Discord and YouTube. Here is the starter. Dominic cooked this up. He is fierce, man. He is so good. Yes, that happened. That is super dope. I'm, I'm going to try and cook to that. And I bet Len Kuis might as well. That fucking Len Kuis, man. I swear to God. Oof. Uh, it is Cirque du Soleil time. Okay. Uh, I saw in, you know, one day I'm surfing Facebook or Instagram. I can't remember. And, uh, and I see this uh, post about this guy who's on my timeline who... It was like a mixer for Cirque du Soleil, and I thought it was like the most fascinating thing that I had ever seen. So I asked him, his name is Anthony Morano, and I asked Anthony if he would put together a day in the life of his job um, and audio duties and, you know, just what it's like working for uh, Cirque du Soleil, mixing live sound in surround uh, and he, man, he really outdid himself. This is fantastic. So, you know, if you're wondering what kind of a career that you want to get into, definitely watch this one. This would have me thinking. Here, here you go. Anthony Morano, Cirque du Soleil. Hey, Anthony Morano here with Cirque du Soleil. As a live sound engineer here on the show, my responsibilities are to take care of the mix for the live band and all the elements of the sound system. I've been with the company for about five years now, and I've toured with their big top shows, Luzia, Volta, and was a part of the newest creation in Orlando, Drawn to Life. The band for a typical Cirque show is about five to seven members, and they can either play on stage or backstage in a pit. They'll have moments where they get up and walk around and use wireless DPA microphones while playing on stage. Some shows, the band is all in the same room, and others can be fit into four different locations. It's also very common to have each musician play multiple instruments during the show. To keep everyone on the same track, they play to a click coming from Ableton, as well as having instrument stems to help supplement the live band out front. Search shows are highly dynamic, and the mix has to reflect that. Some songs are big and powerful like a rock show, others are really intimate like a solo singer on stage. A Cirque show is a combination of concert and theatrical style mixing. At moments you're calm and you're focusing on the balance of the music and others, you are required to have extreme focus. For example, taking 70 individual sound cues during a clown act. You really have to be in tune with that artist because you are an extension of that performance. The sound team is usually made up of three to five sound technicians that rotate between mixing 100 channels of audio out front for the 2,600 audience members every show, or they'll be in the monitor booth managing all the audio for the band and mixing their in-ears. We also have to handle the 30 plus wireless microphones and IEMs backstage during the performance, as well as help wire up performers and the band. The music is very whimsical and atmospheric, world beat music style. It brings a lot of musical instruments from around the world and cultural influences that really make mixing that start to slate quite unique. Some microphones we can even hide inside costumes so they're barely visible. On a big top tent show, we transfer city to city every six to 10 weeks. We need to make sure that the show in the system is packed up correctly and efficiently loaded into the truck. Then we get to the next city and unpack the truck and set everything up again. This process takes about two weeks. 
Every search show uses a different sound system and different sound system components, which challenges us to know the different workflows and system architectures. We will typically deploy about 50 to 60 point source speakers in a 5.1 configuration, which is left, right, center, rear left, rear right, and LFE. During load-in, we will hang all the speakers on the main four masts of the big top. A tech will harness up and climb about 50 to 70 feet up and have our local crew hoist up the speakers individually while we handle the connections and the rigging. Once the speakers are hung and cabled, I will perform a system check with the system processor software to make sure every line coming from the amplifier racks is going to its intended speaker. After the seating is installed, I'll use a custom 3D printed laser mount on each speaker to help me align to each seat. We use the surround sound systems that are behind the audience pointing back at the stage to help localize the sound effects and to be able to pan and move instruments through parts of the entire system. Working at Cirque du Soleil is such a rewarding experience, from mixing on big complex systems to working with casts from 17 different nationalities, speaking nine different languages. It's unlike anything I've been able to do in my whole career in sound. I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for watching. What? How cool was that? That was really great. Anthony, thank you so much, dude. Um, that really was so well done, and I found that truly fascinating. Uh, Abraham Knowlton from the chat roll asks, uh, hey, you gotta move that, I can't see the... You can't see Abraham Knowlton. There you go. Uh, Abraham Knowlton from the chat roll asks, Hey, Ken, uh, what's your favorite Jedi? I'm voting Anakin all day. Well, I mean, he did kill all those kids, so that would rank pretty high. No, um, I would think, I mean, it's got to be Obi-Wan. That's my, my publishing company is Kenobi Songs Publishing. So literally, I mean, I've kind of got to throw down for Obi-Wan. Um, but, you know, uh, Anakin was great until he wasn't. Uh, let's see, what, uh, who, who else? Uh, Kim Goldbrandison asks on the chat roll, uh, Hey, Ken, uh, would you EQ short, medium, and long reverb in a song to create 3D depth? Um, I don't know if I would EQ short, medium, and long reverb. I would just pick short, medium, and long reverbs that I liked and thought worked well and complemented each other and, uh, and go with those. And if I needed to do any, um, gentle shaping, um, I wouldn't do it with an EQ. I would do it with the parameters inside of the, uh, of the reverb unit itself. In fact, I could show you that. Um, uh, identifying reverb types. Bum, bum. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, um, the, uh, oh, the beat challenge is posted if you refresh your stream. Uh, so apparently we didn't have the beat challenge uh, link posted earlier. Sorry about that. Um, but we just did it. Man, we are so quick in real time. Boom. The beat challenge link is live now. Uh, check it out. Okay. Um, identifying re re uh, reverb types. What was, what was the question? I totally forget what the question was. Um, but I'm going to go to identifying reverb types. Before I do that... I'm going to show you, this was the most fascinating thing that I have done all week. I reached out to a bunch of my uh, studio buddies uh, all across the world, and I asked, uh, I got 27 responses, and 27 of you gave me your top five go-to reverb plugins, and I compiled them all onto a list, and that list is linked in the uh, description of the video you are watching right now, and let me show you that incredible, incredible list. Uh, where, where is it? Come on. Stream Deck is supposed to help me. Um, come on, beat starter. Mm. Where is the list? Ah, there it is. Okay. Boom. 
Look at this list. Are you even kidding me? I'm just going to uh, read off. I'm not going to read off all the things that, that uh, they like. Do your research. Download this PDF. Um, Lori did an amazing job designing it. Thank you, Lori. She put all that together today. Uh, everybody has an IG handle or a Facebook handle, something on socials that you can get at them and study their work more. Uh, everybody on this list is uh, incredibly talented. You could learn a ton from them. Their work is impeccable. We have two former... <coughs> hey, you. We have we have two former presidents of a, the AES Society, John Crivet and... <coughs> And uh, Jonathan Weiner, no, don't you even, no, don't you even, don't do it. Uh, and so one of the What are you talking about? Do you mean the one under it? That's not a mic. Wait. Oh, looks good. Looks 
Can you talk? Can you tell Kim to talk? Oh, he's talking. He is talking. Oh, it's not coming. Oh, it's... What is this? What happened here? Because our session ended. Are we still live? I don't know. No, I'm asking Dominic. Oh, yeah, Mal. Mal, he's coming. No, he's... And I'm hearing you, by the way, guys. Hold on, just one sec.